But let's of course not disregard Fabio here. He brought the branded Chimera strategy. And that actually was the strategy that took first place after Swiss at YCS Dortmund. And uh, it couldn't really convert from there on. Yeah. I don't think it made it past top 16 all the way. But uh, maybe this weekend it's time again for the branded strategy. This is not a branded card though. He starts off with the Kashtira Fenrir, which is popular being tacked into so many different decks. I still uh, kind of compare this card to Pan yeah. Like Pankratops was being thrown into all kinds of decks as well because it's just a generically good interruption and card. And this is Pankratops that replaces itself. Yeah. So why would you not play it? It replaces itself, it banishes a card face down even, yeah. so your opponent is very likely to not ever access it again. However, Pankratops has 200 attack points more. True, <laughs> true, true. Tough fight between the two. Yeah, I mean, th this is like the, the new, you know, new Pankratops, if you like. Yes. Everyone's playing it. For sure, it's for such sure. a cool card. It, it wears many hats, Fenrir. He, go, he goes in everything. Absolutely. And now we also reveal to Diego what our deck of choice is. Starting it off with the Mirror Swords Knight. Mirror Swords Knight gets us into the Berthamid. And now we also search the Gazelle, of course. Big Wing Berthamid there on the field. And Gazelle in hand. And usually we just... Oh, we could normal summon out the Gazelle, but we don't decide to do that here. We are just immediately going with the Chimera Fusion, which we also got. And Chimera Fusion is going to summon ourselves the good old, or not so old, but still very, very <laughs> powerful Chimera, the king of Phantom Beasts, which will be able... Oh, and now it gets important. Does Chimera, the king of Phantom Beasts, destroy in the hand, or does it discard? Nah, because it if discards. it does destroy, <laughs> that would be pretty crazy, but it does discard in this case. Imagine destroying one Fire King card of your opponent's hand. But yeah, well, it is not, it is not. Do, do you remember the round, the first round of... Uh, I do, YCS I Tom do. Man. Was it Aguido or was <laughs> it, it Kalbeck? <laughs> Okay. It was crazy, that's for sure. <laughs> that was uh, that was a lot of fun to watch. Gazelle, by the way, for my uh, fellow fire enjoyers, does not send a Salomon Great Monster from the deck to the grave yet upon summon. Ah. Ah. A different Gazelle, I see, I see. There are many Gazelles, actually. So, interesting I saw from Fabio here. A lot of players I see special summon the Fenrir and then wait and then do a different search first to play around Drawn Lockbird, because adding another Fenrir Fair. is kind of low priority. Do you think there's a... A reason? Maybe it's just a slightly different sequencing? Or do you think he's trying to bait out an Ash or something like that? Oof, I think ashing oh. the... Oh, there is Nibiru! Before we even get into the end phase, we are going to get rid of the field here, or trying to do that. You just are counting the summons, Leo. <laughs> five summons already? So we've had Fenrir, we've had Mirror Sword Knight twice. All right. We've I'm pretty sure it's yeah. five, yeah. It should be five. I think if you're a Fabio, you're kind of okay with that. I feel like most of the threat of this field is the discard and then you have the uh, bra uh, branded, not the branded fusion, the chimera fusion to follow up. So I think this is kind of fine. Yeah, I feel like that's okay too. It's not the best, of course, but still you get a monster which we can also still use for a fusion summon of uh, the guardian chimera. So yeah. I do agree it should be all right here. Oh, and actually. still we are going to discard an end phase, of course, because the effect was already activated, and that is going to be one of the cards that <laughs> tells Fabio that there is a Fire King player sitting across of him, Fire King Avatar Barong, one of the older cards, but there, right away, is one of the newer cards instead, the continuous spell, the Fire King Sanctuary, and that activates, not surges, no, it just activates Fire King Island from your deck. Well, just yeah. activating it is like... Even better, isn't it? Because you can't be ashed, you can't be drawled. Yes, indeed. And also it has a built-in protection effect for your Fire King Island because once this card gets destroyed, it destroys all the monsters on your field, which is sometimes not ideal, so you can actually just instead pop one that you want to be popped. Ah, oh, no, I want to destroy all my monsters. So, <laughs> and we searched out the Ponyx there. We destroyed the Veiler on our hand to get the Ponyx, and that is the level one, the legendary Fire King Ponyx that I was talking about, recently added, absolutely mandatory, free of staple and all kind of Fire King strategies, and uh, he got access to it right there. Yeah, I'm so excited to see these Fire Kings in action. It's great to see, like, a, a theme that you saw being played a while ago and get some new cards and really will really pull it together. Absolutely. But I mean, this is this can't be like the real start that Diego wanted, right? Because he had to search it, he had to destroy his effect in <laughs> hand, right? Yeah, yeah, I'm guessing you'd rather destroy something that's not effect oh, that's a really good hit. That to, looks uh, like Anima, look at that, Baron. look at that. We can Ooh, go after yeah. Vini Biru token, perfectly place it into the zone that Anima is pointing to. Now attacking with the Anima and Vini Biru. Sadly though, that 
Aniba is still at zero attack points. It does not convert the attack points of the Nibiru token there, I'm afraid. So that is not going to be enough to attack for game. I think Diego was really happy there. I think he thought that he's attacking for no. game there, but that is not the case. Indeed, we cannot check that token's attack there anymore when it reaches the Spell and Trap zone, and therefore that Anima is only left with zero attack. We are confirming if the judges make sense, but I'm, I'm pretty sure that's how it's handled. Yeah, I'm interested in this because I, I wouldn't actually know. <laughs> it's one of those things. It's, it says original attack, and the Nibiru obviously gives the token an original attack in defense, but tokens can, sometimes can work a little funny, can't they? So Yeah, yeah, for sure. The thing is, I, I had this interaction before, so I'm, I'm like, if I wouldn't have had that inter interaction before, I probably wouldn't know because it's somewhat weird sometimes, as you say, but uh, I had this same scenario occurring to me before. But, of course, let's quickly do the judges their job, check and uh, make an educated decision. Rather be double checked than sorry. And uh, yeah, they are currently doing that. So uh, while we're doing that, why don't we bring it quickly over back to us and talk a little bit more about the Fire King strategy, right? There we are. And um, yeah, tokens, as you say, always a little bit weird. Is there any other token mechanics that we have currently in the game? Because the Adventure Engine was the other big token thing next to Nibiru, but that's not really present in the metagame anymore right now, is it? Yeah, I'm not sure what else is making tokens. I mean, there was a while we had a lot of Link monsters that made sure. tokens, but yeah. at the moment... Sortil. Yeah. Sortil, Sortil is there. I mean, also not that popular anymore, but true, that was a big token strategy it, as well. It, it has some place. I think it also recently got some support in form of a spell or trap card. I think true. it was a spell card that was actually rather powerful, so we might see some Sortil here and there. Yeah, for sure, for sure. It's still OTKs. I mean, and, and still, it does the same thing that Centurion kind of does. Yeah. It just doesn't have a super big engine, therefore has a lot of space to play all kind of cards, depending on the format you are in right now. And as the format is so big and versatile at the moment, you want to be prepared for a lot of different decks, and therefore having space is a comfortable space yeah. to be in, right? <laughs> Even though you're kind of... you. It is, I think, still a significantly larger engine than the Centurions have to play. I think a with little, Centurion, yeah. Yeah, yeah. you go up to probably like 16 cards. Yeah. And for the Sword Soul deck, you would need always a discard or something True. to reveal from your hand. So you need the two-card combos as well. So you, you have to play the Tennies as well. So I think you can still compare the decks, of course. But it is a little tougher <laughs> to fit in all of those hand traps because it's it's really excessive with the Centurion deck, right? Yeah, yeah, it for is, sure. It is a hand trap format, as Lorenzo Mozzelli said, and you can just play twenty. Yeah, totally. I agree for sure. I mean, uh, but yeah, go ahead. Oh, I was going to say Centurion. It's only got like six cards or something. So even if you play yeah. every Centurion, <laughs> you card, have no choice. Basically, you have <laughs> you no have choice like but to make it small. <laughs> 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 there is no other way to handle it for sure. But yeah, I was in round one mentioning that my kind of secret pick for the event to take it down is Infernoble. It lost in round number one, but we know that there are plenty of very uh, skilled players still playing it, piloting it in the field. So I think it's still a decent call. I hope it's a decent call because it's my call. But I didn't even ask you guys, what are you thinking? What are your secret spicy picks to maybe take down YC's Bologna here in Italy? Tom, go ahead. All right, all right. I'm going to call it as Dragon Link. Oh, that is super spicy because it has only been around for five oh, years. I know, I know, I know. It's very spicy, but it's new every time. You know, yes. there's always new cards. I don't know, I just, I just have a soft spot for the deck, I think. It's quite well placed into a sort of wide format because it has such a powerful turn one. I agree. Uh, it can, you know, it can win, it can grind, it can do everything you want, really. Um, and it has that bonus advantage whenever it plays a deck that relies on light and dark monsters, yeah. like, for example, Unchained. For sure. And I mean, good. we saw Lorenzo Muzzelli actually made the decision to include Bistiots yeah. into his main deck. So he That's thinks, yeah, he thinks that they are actually good enough to play in the main deck as an interruption for the interruption effect. And Dragling just has that as a bonus, as you were saying. It's just there. You can just use that as well. And I mean, those cards, even against Rescue Ace, aren't even that bad because sometimes your opponent wants to go for Linko Rebo plays, mm -hmm. tribute of the Hydrant, and then tries to go into a SP to banish something. So I think that they also also have play against the Magic you, work, you yeah. don't really want them to have. Um, I would go into a different direction. Okay, okay, I'm listening. Is it having Cosmic Cyclone in it? Yes, of course. <laughs> okay, fair. Well, I mean, that doesn't determine the deck choice. I'm going to go to Wanderies. Oh, I mean. Uh, yeah, I'm not surprised. But honestly, <laughs> it kind of has uh, switched around. Usually you are the one going for the combo decks, and I'm yeah. saying maybe Fluan the Reese is going to take it all down. But uh, just being in Italy is, is your reasoning, or? 
Yes. Yeah. <laughs> fair, fair enough. Yeah. That's the yeah. whole reason. Home advantage right here. So many players have been playing. Uh, the flu wanderers that were from Italy in the last YCS, they have been performing with the deck as True. well. So I think it has a really good shot of taking it down. Even though we have some, we have seen some some decklists of players who have been very famous for playing flu wanderers, yes. and they have switched away from the deck. So maybe this is not the best call. But actually, now nah, I'm going to stick with it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm interested. So if, if, if Italians, you know, they have a particular fondness for Andres, I'm wondering if there's any other, like, regional differences. Is it something for the UK? Well, I, the thing is, I'm saying Dragon Link for the UK. Oh. Is the most oh, true, actually, Rica, it would be Rika, honestly. You can't get out of it. It's Rika. <laughs> okay, it's obviously okay, okay. Rika. <laughs> what, about the, what about the Germans? What's the, what's the favorite deck of the Germans? Uh, yeah, so we like something consistent <laughs> <laughs> that we can build a house on. <laughs> no, but uh, it's, it's probably... Is there something? I'm, I'm thinking because it also won German Nationals and a lot of very popular German players are playing it at the moment. I, will, I want to say Labyrinth is really, really popular yeah. currently in Germany. I don't know whether that's a long-term thing, but at the moment I would say Labyrinth really is up there. Yeah, trap decks always have a, had a good history at winning German Nationals as well. We have seen Alta guys true, win true, in formats true. where it should not have won the German National oh Championships yeah, because Jake it was, Burma, that was not cool. the best contender for the tournament, but it was just absolutely phenomenally piloted by Jack Verma. So I think that you're actually right. We, we like some trap decks. Kinda, kinda like I mean, traps. I personally do also like trap decks, so it's just fitting I, because I'm German, as you <laughs> you, you know. You, I, <laughs> <laughs> you like keeping the time with the Ku clock, you know, you've got to be yeah. on time. Yeah, absolutely, for sure, for sure. I mean, to be fair, we're saying it's a trap deck, but Labyrinth, the, yeah. the power level that deck has and what they're able to do is incredible. And it doesn't almost feel like a trap deck anymore because it does so much stuff. You cycle yeah. through so much stuff, sometimes even on your first turn, so it's crazy. But speaking about cycling through stuff, we are going to see some cards being moved again because players are back into the action. Let's get back to the table. Smooth segue there. Thank you so I, I much. also love the Labyrinth strategy. You're just throwing away all of the five cards you have in your hand on the first turn. You throw them into the graveyard, even on your opponent's turn. You don't care who wins the dice roll. You just set a lot of traps yeah. by throwing away monster cards. And then you get yeah, them back a, eventually. Yeah, it's like I a boomerang. It. They just yeah. come back. It's pretty exactly. cool, for sure. It feels so. so good to activate one trap card and just get three cards back from your graveyard that have nothing to do with the trap card. Yeah, and as I was anticipating, we only yeah. did 3,000 points of damage. That anima was still on zero attack points and therefore now in main phase number two, Fabio is still left with 5,000 life points. And Diego seems a little bit disappointed because his quick yeah. plan to end this game very, very, very smoothly and quickly did not work out as planned. Yeah, I think he wouldn't have searched for the Ponyx. Potentially not, yeah. Okay. It just seemed so easy and convenient yeah. to do it there, yeah, for but sure. I'm not sure this plan worked anyway because of the, uh, the Chimera in the graveyard. You can just banish it, summon a monster, defend yourself. It's true. True, good point, good point. Okay, we just went into the SP now, and of course we can now take out some of the resources from the graveyard. And we might go after the Chimera, because that would make the uh, Chimera Fusion not be able to return itself to the hand. Yep, therefore we go after it. I like it. Is, it, is it not a quick effect? It is uh, on the opponent, uh, opponent's turn. Yeah, and it, it is the opponent's turn. Yeah. Which, which effect are you talking about? The Banish to summon an Illusion from your grave? No, it's a... Uh Beast or Fiend or Illusion. Beast, okay. That's why it's also a really good uh, support card for the Labyrinth deck. Oh. Because you can send it with Dogmatica Punishment, and then in the end phase, you summon back one of the ladies. Yeah, but he decided not to do it, right? <laughs> I'm it's kind of confused, yeah. Does SP Little Knight definitely targets, right? Yeah, yeah it, it does, it does, for sure. So, Patchwork is being activated. So it's back to Fabio now, Fabio's turn, and he only has to overcome that SP Little Knight there. I'm saying only, honestly, it's quite tough to yeah. uh, play through this interruption because it's just so good being able to banish two cards on the field. But let's see how we can manage to do that. Oh, of course, yeah. there's still the Fenrir. We cleared the field again, so Fenrir is ready to be summoned again. And I mean, that's an easy and convenient way to just attack over the SP Little Knight, to be honest. Do you know what would be great here, Leo, for Fabio? Cosmic Cyclone. Better than Cosmic Cyclone. Oh. Mystical Space Typhoon. Because it would destroy the island, which would then destroy the SP Little Knight. <laughs> However, wait, let me let me <laughs> check the continuous Fire King spell yeah. card. It, it would have been cool. destroy from hand or deck. Oh, really? Yeah, that would be great. No, 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 you can't, you can't. Not from, not from the deck, at least. 
But like hand or face up field, yeah, I don't yeah. think you have one. The Fire King uh, Sanctuary would have been cool here because usually this card interacts with your opponent on their turn to yeah. exceed summon out uh, uh, mon uh, Fire King monsters from the extra deck. So that would be Garunik's Eternity Highing of the Fire Kings, uh, which you could summon out on your opponent's turn when they summon out a monster. But currently, there is no monster to exceed someone with anyway, so that is not going to apply here. I feel like oftentimes you read the XYZ monsters or synchro monsters, you think, okay, that's a, that's a cool card. It destroys some of my opponent's cards. Like, And you just kind of assume that you're going to summon it on your turn, and then you have to read the full engine and then realize, oh, wait, I can summon this on my opponent's turn and destroy all their monsters? That sounds so much better. Well, there comes Chimera Fusion, and I think we kind of have to chain the SP here because otherwise no. we are being met with that guarding Chimera. Oh, Ooh. there is impermanence for the SP Little Knight, though, and it is resolving not only negating the SP Little Knight, but also taking care of the left zone there. So the card in the uh, back row for Diego is also affected by this infinite impermanence. Trading two for one here, basically. Yeah, and I think that Diego also set an impermanence there because he actually set it in the zone where there was already a set card. So I think <laughs> that this comes to backfire feels like Diego it. Now. feels like it for sure. I think that might have been a little bluff from Fabio because the Chimera Fusion was in his hand before. So he just yeah. he didn't set the Chimera Fusion, just true, the impermanence. True. So. I mean, if it was an infinite impermanence, maybe Diego would have would have chained it to Fabio's, which would have negated his. So maybe maybe it's the uh, Fire King. I don't know the name. Of, it's going to destroy lots of cards on either side of the field. Oh right. Which one are you? Fire you King Skyburn, Skyburn. That's the one. Because yeah. he oh, added yeah. that to his hand. True. He so. added that one. That's probably the back row. Yeah, because he doesn't have many more cards to, in his hand. There's only one more. So it's either the sad card or the card in his hand. And the biggest problem for Diego right now is he does not have access to any Fire King cards. The Barong that was discarded by the Chimera was so important earlier because for then sure. he would have had access to the Fire King Island plus another Fire King card plus, plus multiples. Barong is a searcher. It's incredible. Ooh, have been so good. Interestingly enough, we decided to banish the SP Little Knight here with the effect of Kashira Fenrir. We could have just attacked over the SP Little Knight and then... Um, Banish something else, like the Viking Island looks promising yeah. to me, just as an additional resource there on the field. I am surprised he didn't decide to banish that one. He's trying to go for a game, I think. The thing is, aren't we in the battle phase? We should be in the battle phase, right? Because Diego did not activate any kind of monster effects. Also, his life points just lowered. That's true. And therefore, the Fenrir could only activate its effect on attack declaration. Now we are in the end phase. We are going to take one card out of Diego's hand once again. He could possibly have used the uh, Fenrir after the SP Little Knight, even though the Oh, Lil true, Knight the SP was resolve. activated. You're, you're yeah. right, you're right. The SP was activated. You are absolutely right. So back to Diego after getting rid of the circle there. This, yeah. And the, I think Diego, is he picking up his cards? The Fire King continuous spell, can it just activate another copy no. of Island? No, it just, it's, it's just on when activation. It's yeah, okay. yeah. This does not look good. Again, another effect whaler that is to be destroyed. And now Diego just has to hope that there is somehow a monster effect that Fabio desperately wants to activate because he has this talent in hand. The last resort card for Diego right here. And now let's see what he's going with. I think yeah. he's uh, looking at the Avaro. Yeah, he is. He needs to find a proper way to bait out that Fenrir effect most Avatar. likely. Oh, yeah, it's Avatar. It, it, this could also be an unchained card, honestly, right? It would perfectly <laughs> yeah. well fit into the theme, just name-wise. <laughs> yeah, just d and destroy a card in your hand to negate a monster effect. That seems very unchained. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It, it all fits with all. Okay, and yes, indeed, the set card is the search spell card of the new Fire King strategy. It is the Fire King Skyburn. Diego is considering to activate it because you can target an equal number of Fire King monsters you control and cards your opponent controls. So you could just destroy one here, but I mean, that's not even getting you anywhere, right? You get one, you get one of the three out of the way, but there's still two more being ready to attack next turn. Okay, there comes the Skybird. At least we trigger the Avata. What does Avata do yeah, on destruction? Special summons out of the graveyard. Okay, so we could get back Ponyx Man. So that's, that's a way, I guess. That would work. Does the continuous spell it, it prevents i think it lets you destroy something in your deck rather than or maybe i've got it wrong no that was uh, the uh, garunix that destroys from the deck exactly yeah that's the garunix the sanctuary is only face up on the field or in the hands ah, so it's if the viking island would ah. be destroyed okay 
that extra bit of protection. Sanctuary and Island really just working together hand in hand. <laughs> Almost being the same card. Okay, so Diego maybe oh, trying yeah. to destroy the Camera Fusion there and therefore forcing Fabio to activate it here if he wanted to activate it. And maybe he's also forcing Fabio here into activating a monster yes. effect, therefore making his triple tactic talents live. Very well played, getting out the interaction of his opponent and getting this chance of a miracle draw to the Pot of Greed into another another place, something that can get him out of this sticky situation. Ooh, and we see that Fabio is also playing the Light Hacks, uh, the Light Hack Seal Fusion, so that's kind of an indicator of him also being on Red Eyes Dark Dragoon. And yep, scrolling through his extra deck, I can confirm there is a Dragoon, but of course oh. we cannot summon that out here. This Instead, time. we bring out Guardian Chimera. I was going to say, it's doing a great job of like substituting a fusion material for a monster in hand. It's doing a great job of yeah. pretending <laughs> to be a monster in his hand there. Indeed, indeed. So, Fabio, I, I think he's shaking his head. Maybe he was asked, do you activate the effect of Guardian Chimera? And he's just shaking his head. Why would I? Why would I want to play into uh, the Triple Tactics talents here? Let's see. Is oh, yeah, he's got, oh, a, yeah, he's he's got, got 100 effects. effects. Yeah, I think he's not going to miss all of them, surely. He's going to activate effects here. Draw. I mean, drawing two cards. Draw two. Pop a card. Search Seems a card. It's, fair there's enough. so much going on. Oh, oh. What are we destroying? We are destroying the Sanctuary. And the Barong hits the field right here. Barong looks like he's having a lot of fun. I don't know what he's doing, but he looks like he's having fun doing it. <laughs> he's, like just, he's, he's doing some sort of fire dance. Yes, yeah, so Barong would not be able to trigger in the graveyard because it only triggers when a Viking monster is destroyed and not the Sanctuary there. But still, it's, uh, it found its way onto the field here. It was special some by Avatar's effect. Through the effect of Avatar, exactly, yeah. The problem with Barong is that Diego has right now is that it does not. it is a search for the deck, but it does not search a card immediately. It yeah. gets you a card on it's the next step. It's a little slow, yeah. indeed. It is a little slow. But now, Diego just clarifying the game state here, trying to figure out where we're at. And then probably just eagerly waiting to activate that Triple Tactic Talents there to bring him right back into the action, get two more cards. Or is there a world in which you are taking something? I, I, I don't think so. Don't think so either, because you can't really do a whole lot with it. Like, I'm so looking at the here? extra deck, um, I'm seeing... We already saw the SP Little Knight, which would be okay-ish, yeah, but also not really the greatest ever in this scenario. There's Hita. Is there a fire monster we can take with Hitar? Potentially. So may maybe if there's a fire monster in the graveyard of Fabio, which I'm not seeing at the moment, we could go Hita into Celine into Axis Code Talker, which would not be the worst idea because we would at yeah. least clear the whole field there. Uh, but and there's only 5,000 life points on Fabio's so oh, remaining. So. Oh, you're right. So that actually is a legit option there, potentially. I, I don't think that there is a fire monster, though. That's the thing, yeah. <laughs> I, I do agree. I don't believe there's a fire monster. In this made-up scenario, this is a really good play. <laughs> yep. There's a lot of dark monsters in there, but I don't think there's a fire monster either. There's not even a fire monster in the main deck of Fabio, so I can comfortably tell, tell you <laughs> there is not going to be one in his graveyard right now either. Oh, he's not oh, playing Ash Blossom. He's not playing Ash Blossom. Oh, there's, there's Ash Blossom. Blossom. <laughs> I, I'm a sorry. There. Okay, yeah. Forget it. But I mean, we did not see him activating yeah. Ash Blossom, so I think we're good on this. But yeah, you're right, there's Ash Blossom. It would have been a controversial choice to not include Ash Blossom into your main deck. That is true. Okay, so... Okay, Diego, oh, Diego's rolling up his sleeves. Yeah, now we're yeah. going to see the triple tactic last resort talents right here. So, Unless there is that Ash Blossom. Fabio's still holding on to a fistful of cards, and he's just drawn two more. Yeah, that's true. So it's not triple tactics thrust, but I think Diego is putting a lot of trust into that draw Ooh, two there, right? One. Oh, and now finally, Diego is activating it, the quarter century one, which is really, really nice looking. He wants to draw indeed, so no Hita lines whatsoever. What are we getting here? Two very, very important cards he is picking up here, and you can't really tell oh. from his face whether it's good or oh, bad, that, but that. he found a good card there for sure. That's a really good pickup, honestly. Yes, that is true. Now we're going to see the very famous Diabell Star engine now. This is something that elevates a lot of deck that have level one fire type monsters. And also also helps him a lot because he decided to summon back the Barong instead of the Ponyx. Yeah, that's really, really good. It's an incredibly pick uh, it's an incredible pickup there. Five thousand life points for Diego to go. How good is this deck at OTKing? The impermanence that you drew, you oh. do not care about it. It's good that it's nothing that you don't want to discard. 
Let's just get it over with this card, and we're going to search for the Snake Eyes spell. Yep. Oh, yeah. Diego really blinged out his deck there, right? That's a lot of beautiful cards he's using. I was going to say, are we, are we activating Fenrir now, perhaps? Oh, that doesn't even seem too bad, honestly, but looks like we have decided against it. He picked it up. <laughs> yeah, just <laughs> for a second. Double checking it. the effect. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a branded card, so you have to make sure what it does. For a so. second, I forgot that there was also effects on the side of Fabio. I was so excited about the Fire King cards. It's easy oh. to do. You just have to make sure you're not doing it when you're playing. You're just watching your opponent being like, yeah, that seems cool. He's like, wait a second. <laughs> 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 I have a Nibiru. I should have used that at some point. We are getting rid of the Diabell stuff, a Black Witch for the Snake Eye spell. And that probably is just going to get us, get us the Ponyx. I don't think there is any other... Oh. oh, never mind. There is another target, and he's going for the other target. And this, indeed, is also a Snake Eyes card. So the spell card now acts as it was intended, as an actual Snake Eyes card. And this is Snake Eye Ash being now, summoned to the field. Finally, an Ash activated in yes, this game. Yes, there is an Ash, indeed. And this one is kind of interesting because on normal or special summon, you can add one level one fire monster from a deck to your hand. So even though we did not summon out the Ponix, we might still be able to search oh. it out here through this. Ooh, and the Fenrir oh, the is banishing yeah. the Barong. Okay. We're going to try and find some more cards that help us. We're drawing a lot now. This is very nice to see. So Snake Eye Ash is going to probably activate the effect. Oh, we are already having the Ponyx in our hands, so uh, I missed that one. I've, did we normal summon? We did, yeah, we normal summoned the... Uh, what's his name? The I can't remember his name, Arvata? Yeah, yeah, we oh, did. Right. So um, now the second effect of Snake Eye Ash is being activated. You can send two face-up cards you control to the graveyard, including itself, which we did with the Viking Island as well. And then you can special summon out one Snake Eye monster from your deck. And there's a pretty big one, also very recently being released, the Snake Eye's Flamberge Dragon. And he also summons back two level one monsters now for the effect of Flamberge. And all of a sudden, Diego is back up rolling here. Yeah, so the Flamberge was immediately destroyed by that Fire King Island. But now we're going to get another copy of Fire King Island. Well, from the continuous spell. Oh, that looks really good. Yeah, out of nowhere, Diego is coming back into this. And honestly, I don't know whether I like the timing of Fabio using his Castoria yeah. Fender effect there. That seemed very, very early. He hoped it would shut down the turn of Diego, but he just got started. Or rather late, because it, it looked like it would stop the Diabell Star engine from going off. It, yeah. It, I, I really liked, uh, would have liked to see it immediately, because there were no cards in Diego's hand. However, we have Ponyx and Ash now on Diego's side, and he's going to show us the strength of the Fire King deck now. Coming back, maybe, from a really terrible position he was in. We're going to the Link oh, first. Oh, Link Rebo coming. Is this just an SP play now? I think he's... Oh, oh there's dark? dark. Okay. okay, there is no fire monster in the graveyard, but there's, of course, plenty of dark monsters. So I think we are still going for the Selene line. I think we are trying to get up to Axis Code Talker. So I feel like Diego has victory here in his hands. Another beautiful card coming to the field. It is Selene. And there is enough spell cards in the graveyard, right? Let's uh, double check. 100. <laughs> yes, okay. We can summon back, summon back the witch. That is not really happening right here, however. D does he even have a Lua in the graveyard? I don't think so, right? But he's still got another He's got another Chimera in his graveyard. Okay. So there's, you can just so, activate yeah. it in the battle phase. Selene. This doesn't target, right? So you can no, still nope. yeah. destroy the Chimera. Also, Chimera is only target protected if there is a regular polymerization. In the he graveyard. added a polymerization. Maybe he hasn't activated it yet. Destroying the Mirror Swords Knight as well. But is there even another attribute in the graveyard we can use? No. He's oh, light it's only dark. Light and Dark. So, oh, we are not going for it here just yet. I was so hyped. I, I felt like Diego got it there, but he just goes into the battle phase once again. Last turn, he already fought. He has came yeah. there with the Anima. And uh, he was very, 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 very eager to do it here this turn. But again, it doesn't work out. Fabio still with 2,900 life points left there. Okay, but now I'm really confused because you have the Sanctuary, right? So you have access to Island. Island is not hard once per turn, meaning that you can use, if you have multiple copies, it multiple is, of those. It is oh, I turn. can't read. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Island is once per turn. It's, that's it's true. hidden there because it's like it says you can only, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's hidden in the car text. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's after the, you know, it says it, it says the first effect that if, it, if it's destroyed or sent, leaves the field, then it destroys all of your cards. Uh, but then afterwards it says, yeah, you can only use one of the effects. Okay, and that is going to be what we pass it back over to Fabio on. 
So Diego sitting there also only with 3,500 life points. And Ooh. there finally is Branded <laughs> Fusion. I assume that Ooh. came from the top. So that's a nice pickup there. Sanding a quarter century rare for Novalbas. Or I think it's Starlight even. There, there was no quarter century version of the card, I think. To be honest, it was about time that we see a Brandon Fusion yep. in the third turn of this game. Diego has had a decent time coming back from this bad position earlier, having but no real place, but now this is looking so good for a fun. Oh, yeah. I'll be on the Branded Dragon yeah. is being used, and I think now we are talking about it earlier, foreshadowing it, and I think Red Eyes Dark Dragoon is hitting the field here. Yeah, Fabio, he's had enough. He's like, enough of this, Branded Fusion. Let's go. Oh, and the super <laughs> polymerization! Fusing with the Axis Code Talker and probably the Albion by discarding the patchwork. And we should be having enough damage here on the field to attack for game after that. Uh, almost the Dragoon is just yeah, enough. Yeah, almost to enough, you're right. Game right here. We're summoning a mud, a mud ring, <laughs> and that is uh, not that impressive of a field, but it is enough damage to go for a game. And now Diego packs it up. We know that Fabio has won this game one, grinding out the Fire King deck. Diego, just it, it was too late for him to get into the game. He, yeah. he, he struggled in the first two turns, and then he got into his engine. Unfortunately, Fire King Island, because he can read better than me, <laughs> is only hard once per turn. So you can only use it. It doesn't matter how many different copies you activate. You can only use one. And that cost him the game, unfortunately. Yeah, it was a real big back and forth. And uh, honestly, it was also a roller coaster of emotions for Diego, right? Because he thought he won it right away with that yeah. anima move. He was like, I'm attacking for game here. This game <laughs> is over. Let's go to the next. But then the judges uh, had to give him a sad <laughs> message. The it's not judges. over just yet. Yeah, <laughs> telling you, you've got to do it properly. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> and it's, it's hard, even especially in the feature match, where there's a lot of pressure. You know that people are watching you. Recover from this. Yeah. You think you have game. You're going. You're deliberately searching the ponics because you think, hey, I can go into anima. I set this. I put this token in the correct zone so I can anima take it and win. And then you realize, oh, yep. <laughs> Oopsie. <laughs> There's always that first moment where you realize how it is because uh, yeah. I mean, it's it's not like crazy to think that it will, will work because like yeah. it's as you say sometimes tokens are a little bit weird and sometimes it would work and sometimes it wouldn't but here in this scenario it did not work and in his hat it all worked out in practice he had to be stopped and it wasn't uh, meant to be for game number one but i mean there's still potentially two more games to be played out so diego say, is still in this top tip for everyone coming to a ycs okay now my, well one of my favorite new things um, I say it's new, it's not that new anymore, but you can go and ask judges. Um, oh, there's yeah. a, there's a store you can go and ask. If there's something you're not sure about going into an yeah. event, you want to check how it's going to work, you can go and ask before the event, which I really love. Because re oftentimes there are new cards and you think, oh, I don't know how this works. So yeah, you can go yeah. and ask. How, how, I mean, and sometimes you're not sure how it's going to be done for this event, because sometimes, you know, sometimes one thing gets ruled one way at one event and one way at another. Yeah, for sure. So it's really nice to go and ask. I and, really love it. And it's not just that you ask any kind of judges. It's actually the head judges of the event yeah. sitting down there and answering you the questions. There's like a proper setup stand, as you were saying, every Friday of a YCS. And it says, ask the head judges or something up top there. And yeah, it's a really cool way. If you're not sure, just double check for sure. Yeah. And let me tell you, they are busy. So it's, it's <laughs> yeah. really nice that they're taking the time out of their day to just answer questions. So if they, you get a question answered, Say thank you. Yeah, absolutely <laughs> do so, for sure. And uh, yeah, what was the last judge ruling you had? <laughs> can, can, can you recall it? <laughs> From the top of your hat? Because I, I really, I, I recently even had that anima situation. I'm not even kidding. I like, I was playing Pearly, I was resolving Nibiru, and then I was like, this is easy peasy. We are just going for game here. How could it not be? And then I had the same realization that good old Diego had there. So I had that recently for myself. Does any one of you have a special situation where you weren't sure, but then had that call? I'm, sure. Sometimes you I'm going a blank here. I'm sure I have hundreds of rulings you learn like every time yeah. every time something new happens yeah. and you just think oh, I have no idea it works that way. But the, the cool thing is though, when you know the right solution, everything before that is kind of blanked out, right? Yeah. <laughs> After you have the correct answer from a judge, you're like, okay, I'm set though. I don't need to remember everything before that. I had a very interesting <laughs> one where I had a zodiac whiptail Ooh, and yeah. an exceeds all times all times over it. And oh, I just hear that the duelists are ready, so let's, let's not take any time away. <laughs> I can tell that story later. Let's sure. go right into the game, too.
all that was maybe a bit abrupt, but I think that uh, everyone appreciates some good Yu-Gi-Oh right here instead yes, of some storytelling about sure. a, <laughs> a very interesting Judd Kawai. Okay, <laughs> Diego this time starting it off with the Sinful Sports package. And it's just what he wanted. Yes. Great pun there, Leo. Again, Appreciate the same it. one <laughs> that I did earlier. <laughs> yeah, it got even better, honestly. I enjoyed it even more this time, not gonna lie. So, I know we did. are discarding the Biru here for the effect of the Abel Star. And uh, the Witch is, of course, going to set the other card that we are playing in our deck, the original Sinful Sports, Snake Eye. You were right about the bling of the deck. Yeah. Right? He's, he's really maxing out rarity-wise there. That, that was why we picked him for the feature match, right? We yeah. go around, we check. If, everyone, if you've got a full deck of quarter-century rares, you know, that's, that's how we get you. You're in, yeah. <laughs> Easy peasy. Okay, and there we see it. Diego really always goes for the Snake Eye Ash first. And I mean, why wouldn't you, right? When you have an option to just search out the Ponyx, why would you summon out the Ponyx there? We can just get it later on as well. Normal summon Ponyx gets us the Sanctuary, so this time, not being interrupted by Fabio at all. He has a way easier time showcasing us what the Fire King deck is capable of doing. Fire King Island now also on the field. Looking good. <laughs> Diego was about to send a continued spell card there, but no. Destroying the Ponyx for the effect of Island. And what are we getting with that? It looks like we're going to see Arvata soon. Yes, I'm really excited about this because I don't think that everyone has figured out how to play the Fire Kings yet, so I really want to see what Diego has been cooking up this weekend. Absolutely, I do agree. He did. He started out a lot quicker. This game, which makes me feel like he's got a much more, you know, yeah. optimal hand, because oftentimes, you know, you practice the combos with the good cards, and then totally. oh, sometimes and you get this a This card we have hand. not seen yet, but it's also a new introduction from the Structure deck, and it's a Fire King High Avatar Kirin. And uh, that's a very, very powerful card. And it's also is a free it or is it the Garunix? I think. Oh, oh, it's tough. Oh, I, wait. I, oh, it I is definitely the Garunix. Yeah, you're right. It is the Garunix. I, it was looking like the Kirin for me, which is a free of in the deck, but you are absolutely right. This is the Sacred Fire King Garunix and stat, which he searched out there. And also, it is only a two of only, but uh, still a very, very, very powerful card. Sometimes you want to draw it, sometimes you don't. Yeah, exactly. And the thing with uh, the Sacred Fire King of Runix is you just search it out and there was all, oh, there was a monster being destroyed and it immediately oh. is able to trigger and therefore Garunix made his way to the field by its own effect. But Fabio is like, I want to get rid of some monsters here, not destroying them, but just tributing them through the effect of Nibiru. And that is going to hurt here. Excuse me, would you take some time out of your combo to look at my rock? Yep, it's happening. Nibiru resolving. We're currently calculating how many attack and defense, po defense points are going to be on that token. Once again, it feels like all of those games here in round number two are going to be met with a Nibiru. Chris, if I saw correctly, there's also a Nibiru in the hand of Diego there. Yeah. I think like, counting the attack points always feels like a, a, a consolation prize. I don't know if that's the word. <laughs> the way you're like, yeah, at least this is a lot of attack. <laughs> Maybe I, I'll just get to attack with it next turn. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully. Very now, likely. Now, of course, a fantastic draw here would be Triple Tactics Talent. Can Diego find it again? He resolved it in the last game, uh. almost netting him the win, but no, he draws a third copy of Nibiru because he already discarded one in the beginning with the Diabell Star Witch. But now he's stuck there with two Nibirus. And honestly, I'm somewhat surprised by him even being on Nibiru still because Initially, I wouldn't say Nibiru is the greatest card versus Brandon Camara, honestly. It can come up, but it's not really that great. Yeah, I agree with you. It feels kind of... Because the so, some decks have to do a lot of link summoning and so on yeah. to get to where they want to be. But the, the branded monsters and the Chimera monsters are so big and so impactful just straight, straight away. You know, you've already got a lo couple of searches. You can then activate a fusion spell if you've got one left over. It, it, uh, it does feel a little bit not great. Yeah. Especially after we have seen the Red Eyes Dark Dragoon. On top of that as well, yeah, you're right, totally. That can just stop the Nibiru indeed. But I mean, there is another pretty impactful hand turn direction in the hand of Diego, which is Ash Blossom and Joy Spring. And of course, every branded player hates this card <laughs> because it always gets used on branded fusion. So, but there, first of all, is going to be the Norman Summon of Gazelle. The king of mythical claws. Indeed. Not and the king of mythical beasts. We are searching out the Chimera Fusion there. Oh, yeah. but we, we only searched the Chimera Fusion, didn't we? Yeah, Gazelle only searches one. Perfomet searches two. Oh, yeah, you're right, you're right. You can decide what you want to search. So now comes Chimera Fusion, and I think... That was it Guardian Chimera even, right? Wasn't it? 
No, okay, it was only two monsters. Okay. Well, it was a nice shame. combo there. Well, it's not a combo, but so uh, this Chimera that only requires one Fiend and one Beast. So the Gazelle is a Beast and the Edgem Chain is a Fiend. So you can summon it without needing Perfumet. That is indeed very right. So there is going to be now the Chimera, the King of Phantom Beasts on the field. So Diego kind of, uh, in my mind, kind of correctly waiting to either hit that uh, Mirror Sword Knight or to hit the Branded Fusion. Totally, But I it, agree. it looks like Fabi has achieved quite a lot without it. Maybe yeah. he's just looking at this Ash Blossom saying, should, should I have used this by now? Like, what's it? There why, comes why is Cornfield it still in my hand? now. Yeah, that, that, is, that is the uh, big strength of the Branded Chimera deck, that you can do a lot without activating the Branded Fusion. For sure. And also, your Bareformate really baits out an Ash Blossom because you can add two cards with it. But you can, most of the time, put the chain links so that you cannot get ashed on it. Yeah, no, it's, it's really nice to have like multiple things to do, each of which requires your opponent to have the Ash Blossom to respond. Okay, but we are going into the battle phase, so that's good news at least for Diego, yeah. because it means we are going to see him having another turn here, because that is not going to be enough to attack for game just yet. Yeah, that Nibiru really really put a halt on things for Diego, but it doesn't look like Fabio, Fabio is fully able to capitalize. Yeah, sometimes you can also like read your opponent a little bit. Diego very, very, very quickly discarded the Nibiru for the effect of the Diabelster, which kind of signalizing over to Fabio that there might be another copy in hand, which in fact was the case. So maybe Fabio picked up on that. All right, now we're going to see the OG polymerization with the Hex and Nibiru. So let's see what he's going to fusion sound out with this. It is the Albion. Okay, Albion, and I think this is summon number four, right? So we cannot even Nibiru here. And then the next summon is going to be the Nibiru. So indeed, as we were anticipating, that is somewhat of a problem. The only scenario that I can see here is um, Fabio activating like Branded Fusion or Mirror Swords Knight after it. That is being Ash, and therefore Fabio responds to the Ash Blossom. Oh, oh, okay. hold on, hold on. That is a quick effect, of course. Oh, we can use Kirin. the effect of Kirin, which I was mentioning earlier in our opponent's main phase as well. And we try to get that out of the way before the, knee, uh, before the Dragoons hit the field. Oh, and he destroyed the Ash from his own hand. That is definitely illegal. You're not allowed to discard Ash Blossom <laughs> <laughs> against the branded Chimera deck. But it has to be a fire monster, therefore we couldn't go with the Nibiru, and we had to go and but get rid of the Ash Blossom instead. How do you profit from that one now? Because this one only destroys a card on the opposing side if it gets destroyed itself. And how do you do that right now? That is a very, very legit question. Let's double read on Fire King High Avatar Kirin. Also, is the Albion actually able to summon out a Dragoon? Because I don't know if there's a Dragon Monster in the graveyard. Ooh, good but Albion's points. a Dragon Monster. Oh, yeah, you're oh, right. true. There, there's absolutely Albion on the field. Oh, but we have summoned... I'm, I'm not sure the what monster, that is. That's another, uh, another one of the another one of the Chimera cards, and yeah. it's uh, Chimera the Illusion Beast. Oh, that's good. I, I knew Chimera the Illusion Beast, but I guess maybe I've just not seen it. Uh... Oh wait, no. Or is it Burfamet? They look really oh, that's similar. New. Yeah, no. I think it's Burfamet. It I think it's the reliever. Burfamet. Or is it Magnum? No, it's not Magnum. I don't it's think it was Magnum. Magnum either. Are you sure? It, it pretty certainly was Magnum. Yeah. Okay, but, but wait, where, did, where did the card go? Where did the card go, though? I, I just saw the card highlight and I was immediately thinking, hey, okay, then it, it's got to be Chimera, <laughs> but I did that. <laughs> <You> did that. <laughs> so, where, it, it definitely wasn't Magnum, no. No, well, just wait. <laughs> so, if you destroy a Nibiru token... No, it can't be Magnum. Yeah, with, uh, with Dragoon, does Dragoon gain the attack? Um, no, I don't think so. More, more token rulings questions. <laughs> Send them in. <laughs> indeed, indeed. Ask your Jitters at home or in your local store. They will be happy to answer ruling questions because that is what they are there for. Okay, and now it's just going to be another Chimera. That makes it easier for us yeah. because we don't have to figure out which card it was. But it, it was either the Burfamid or the uh, Chimera of the Illusion Beast, I'm very sure. Okay, now... Of course, oh, we okay. are also going to trigger the graveyard effect of Garunix now, and that will probably be the way to trigger the Kirin, I would assume. Because the Garunix can be used in hand or in the graveyard. And now Diego, all of a sudden, he was, he was 
holding his hand still for forever, and then all of a sudden he decided now it's time to start, now it's time to go. And note, please note, that there's now two level 8 monsters on the field for Diego, oh, yes. meaning he could also use the effect of his continuous spell of the Sanctuary of the Fire King to get out an uh, Exceed monster. And that's not only any Exceed monster, it's Garuni, uh, Garunix Eternity, which would then destroy the entire field of Fabio, or at least all of his monsters. But currently, his field only consists of monsters, so that would be all of his field right now. It, this looks like it's going to be a topsy-turvy for Fabio here. I can't imagine this was yeah. his plan to summon an Albion and a second, <laughs> second Chimera. Probably not, yeah. You're right. I mean, he must have been pretty happy when you just get to attack your opponent. You know, Nibiru sort of ends their turn, you get to summon some monsters, attack them, and then it, it all looks like it's, yeah, not gone according to plan, though. I don't know if Fabio knows what Garunix Eternity Hyang of the Fire Kings does, and I don't know if he knows that this card exists. So he just knows that his opponent is going to be able to exceed someone on his turn if he does anything else, and this is scary. It is, for sure. When you don't know what's coming, it's even scary. Yeah? I mean, if you know what it is, it is already a bit scary. But when you have yeah. no clue, it's even scarier, for sure. And honestly, I mean, we read this card before the match because we were preparing for a Fire King featured match. But if I wouldn't have done that, maybe I would have not necessarily known that card either. Because it's a specific card that comes up in some scenarios, but it's not like an overall choice that you always know. Like, of course you know Ponyx because it's the main new yeah. thing for the deck. Of course you know the new Garunix, but that Exceed Monster that sometimes is being summoned out on your opponent's turn is not the first card you're reading when you're reading up on Viking cards, of course. You, you think everyone knows Ponyx and Garunix? Yep. <laughs> I, I talked with at least 10 people knowing yeah, at it. least 10, okay. At least 10. Okay. How many people did you talk to? At least 10. <laughs> 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 Didn't I say that already? <laughs> I remember Basti running through the venue yesterday, panically asking, do you know Ponyx? Do you know Garunix? <laughs> Yep, <laughs> that's one. <laughs> I am convinced that I uh, that I convinced at least two people putting it into their deck, actually. They were just playing a Fire King deck without it before? They were like, yeah, I'm playing Fire King. I'm not sure about this Ponyx no, card. No, I think they just added the Fire King engine. Uh. <laughs> what to Rescue Ace? Infernoble? Uh, I won't give that away, of course. <laughs> so that, that that's, would what, be that that's what happens when you let Busty cook this. <laughs> <laughs> Is this going to be your new thing after Plunder? Um, No. <laughs> oh, yeah. How, how was your time playing Plunder, by the way? Good. Was it? Mm -hmm. You didn't. You didn't come in with an eye patch or anything. You've not. You've not fully committed. I made third place at an OTS championship with it. How about that? Stop talking. <laughs> I, 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 I don't know how defeated your point. I defeated your point. I took that deck and played it. I don't know why you're asking me so sarcastically about it. I had a great time playing Plunder. Of course. I think that's just what I sound like. I'm sorry. I wasn't meant to be sarcastic. <laughs> okay, okay, fair enough. <laughs> I won. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. But yeah, no. I mean, it was a fun time for sure. Plunder has not really, like, we had it. What was it? Was it the European Championship where Plunder was in our featured match area? Round seven, round eight? I think somewhere around that, I agree. And I, I loved the deck, Runic Plunder specifically, and I really enjoyed playing it. Uh, but um, did, did you have any... Uh, decks that you enjoyed really playing lately, mostly for fun, because we are all competitively minded, so of course we are getting our hats into the most meta decks of the format and try to figure out what they are doing and so on, but sometimes you just want to sit down and have a fun game of Yu-Gi-Oh, don't you? Yeah, my favorite deck to play is, is the branded deck. Oh, yeah. I think it's just, it's so much fun, like you just summon all these big fusions and then somehow during the end phase you add back like five cards to your hand and you think you know, if you're playing against the deck and you think they might have run out of stuff, and it's like, absolutely not, no. Let me I just <laughs> take my graveyard. <laughs> I should have known that you're a branded enjoyer. Yeah. <laughs> How about you, Leo? Oh, no, I know the answer. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> then you just immediately regret cosmic it. Cosmic Cyclone. Uh, yes, Cosmic Cyclone uh, is Theme. half the engine, the other half is Salomon Grade, of course. Uh, it has just gotten some support recently, yeah. like the Volcanics have. Really good, it, really it, good. It is really good. And there was one card, Salomon Grade Charge, that just did the trick for me. The deck was That's already fair, pretty fair. strong, but Salmon Great Charge was just so good because nobody was expecting it. And you can take three fire monsters, not necessarily different names, that are banished or in your graveyard, put two of them into the extra deck or deck, and summon out the last one. Yeah. So your th opponent thinks, hey, my opponent is out of resources, and you just activate Charge, special summon back a Rage Phoenix, then put the other one back as well, Reincarnation link it, go into the will, and then you OTK yeah. out of nowhere. It's and really, really cool. I feel like fire in general as an attribute in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh! really is on the rise, isn't it? Because yeah. historically, I want to say 
light and dark, mainly dark, yeah. has, has been the main competitor in terms of the best attribute in the game. Yeah. But Fire has been has been putting up a show lately because the Infernoble deck is really using it. The Sinful Spoils package is amazing. Rescue Ace is having a couple of Fire cards, I think. Fire really is it in top three right now, I want to yeah. say. I, I think the Sinful Spoils has, has really launched the uh, Fire into the mainstream. Yeah, for sure. But uh, let's see whether the Fire Monsters here in this feature match can also return back into the action and maybe take down game number two. Back to the table it is. Yeah, I think that the players are siding right Ooh, now. Ooh, <laughs> and that means that Diego has indeed taken down game number two. And therefore, we have an even score again. Okay, so we got an answer on the judge ruling there. We have clarified that game number two goes to Diego. And that means we are having the joy of seeing another game. And we can, while the players are looking through their side deck, also have a side deck look here on our yeah, own. We can join the players yes, looking through Diego, the side Yes, Diego, for example, is siding. Cosmic Cyclone. Let's start Let's it off like go. that. So Leo is happy while we're looking at the side decks. A question for you guys. DD Crow, super versatile card all around. How good is it versus Fire Kings, though, from what we can tell so far? There is a couple. I mean, we can hit the Garunix in a graveyard, which we just saw coming back from there. But there's also some more stuff, isn't it? Yeah, I don't want to be too, too uh, pouring cold water on you here, but this is Diego's side deck you're looking at, so... Yeah, he, he is playing the Fire Kings. Yeah, yeah. but what about him playing the Mirror Mage at some point in the tournament? But no, you're right. Okay, but uh, how good is it then versus the uh, Brandon Camaro strategy? Sorry for getting that mixed up. <laughs> no worries. It's fine. Uh, <laughs> no, it's, I, I don't know if it does too much. Uh, there are definitely applications for the DD Crow, but it's never this one spot where you think, oh, I have the DD Crow and I'm going to use this and it's going to throw him completely yeah. off guard. And you're like, yeah, okay, he has like one of the ten effects he can use that profit, and I can just take one away, so my opponent goes plus nine instead of I want to say one good thing to hit with the DD Crow, though, is Chimera Fusion, because yeah. this card recovering itself all the yeah. time is like really powerful, isn't it? Yeah, you have to be careful, though, because sometimes they can just search an extra copy. True, true. Yeah, it's sometimes not the end of the combo, that's for sure. Then, um, next up, we have Drone and Lockbird, which can definitely be uh, kind of handy versus the at least be Chimera package of the deck, because that is searching non-stop. The branded yeah. part, not so much. But I mean, we're also playing the Fright for a package and so on. So I do believe that it's actually uh, kind of cool. And I think Drone Lockbird will certainly come in. I like it a lot more, at least, than compared to Nibiru, for example. Oh. It seems a lot better than Nibiru to me. Um, we also saw the Fenrir and the Fright for patchwork. True. A lot so of cards, extra yeah. cards. It's nice to... I love playing a lot of spell cards, add cards to your hand, but yeah. then sometimes, you know, you have a fistful of them and then you get drawled and you just look at them and think, <laughs> why, why did I do this to myself? But those hands are the ones where you get really nervous because you're like, oh, this is so good. There is no way I'm losing this unless... <laughs> Unless <laughs> you look at your opponent and say, you wouldn't do that to me, would you? <laughs> Absolutely We're friends. Not. On resolution. Oh. On <laughs> resolution of this. Game number three oh. now, though, because players are ready. Back into the action it is. Okay, let's... <laughs> All right, there we go. The players are ready, I think. And... This is going to be game number three, though. It is relatively early in the tournament, round two, if you have just tuned in. We also have an indicator of that on top of the screen. So you always know which round we are in, in case you have been in and out of the stream. So it's really early, but you, you, it, it's really tough to lose early. For sure, of course. It will definitely make the rest of your day and the rest of your tournament run a lot harder if you start up by losing. But one of those two players will have to deal with that. Let's see whether it is Fabio or Diego. We started with Cornfield, Cornfield Cordial, and look at that. There Ooh. is the effect Valen Negation on the card that would have been searching two cards there on the Burfomet. And Is there any way for Fabio to continue? I mean, with a branded fusion or a uh, Camara fusion, oh. he's going to be very happy. Oh, looking good for Diego here as Fabio just sets one card and passes it over. And Diego is licking his lips. He's ready. He only sees that birth from it and one set card there. He wants to do it now. He wants to win this feature match so badly. Oh. And he has the continuous spell again. Let's go. Sanctuary being activated, followed by the Fire King Island. Sanctuary is such a powerful card. It looks like it's glued to Diego's hand so oh, far. Yeah. This card has always been there for him, sometimes even without the Fire King. And so finally, we have a good card to destroy with the Fire King Island right away. We are destroying the Ponyx, searching go. out the Garunix. 
Does the Ponyx, if Ponyx, when it's destroyed, it lets you add it back maybe during the next standby phase? Yes, indeed, yeah. indeed. But I think just being able to destroy any fire monster allows you to search the Grunix and then immediately special summon it, which is what yep. you want to do. It's exactly what you wanted. Garunix now coming to the field, also destroying from the deck the oh, Kirin. So Garunix is the one card that can destroy stuff from your deck, which is so nice. Just destroying card of your deck is really, really good. Okay, okay, we destroy oh. the... Wow, we destroy the back. He'll be only one on the side of Fabio. His last hope right there. And the Ponyx is coming back, searching out. Now also the Fire King Skyburn. It's looking nice for Diego here. So there can be multiple now, but this deck does not really suffer from there can be only one that much because you have Beast and Winged Beast That's and Beast true. Warriors. Yeah, yeah I was gonna, it's one of those kind of confusing ones because like, it looks like they should all be the same type, but actually they're all slightly different. And yeah, it's just the same and, attribute. Yeah. Beast and, well, they're all kind of like one of the three Tri Brigade yeah. types, if you like. Beast, Winged Beast, and uh, Beast Warrior, I think. Yeah, that's true. So, Ponyx on the field, summon an attack position <laughs> with his mighty 500 attack points. Oh, that's an angry Ponyx, let me tell oh, you. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. But I mean, it would be good enough to at least bring him a hat and life oh. points here after we run over the Burfomit. But we have to be careful with the Burfomit because Burfomit is also an illusion monster, isn't it? Yeah. No, it's a fiend. Oh, okay, it's not. Okay, fair enough. I did not say yes to that. <laughs> <laughs> true, it's one of the. Uh, Chimera Monsters. Oh, but I mean, we can technically uh, exceed someone on our opponent's turn, but we can also just do it on our own turn in the uh, normal way by overlaying two level 8 monsters there, bringing out the Garunix Eternity, oh. Hying of the Fire Kings, and destroying the monster. There comes Circle, bring back Kirin, destroying the Exceed monster. Bringing back this both is, monsters wow. from the graveyard, both materials. Oh. Diego attacking with all of them. What a quick and swift turn game that was. Diego is winning with the Fire King strategy. What a game that was. Yeah, Very well I mean, You know what? That, that that reminded me of like Kaiba, you know, attacking with the Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon and then activating yeah. defusion and exactly summoning. Exactly the same. That, was, that right. was the moment. Yeah, the circle. I thought, wow, okay, it looks like there are no interruptions on him. He, he has everything he wants. He's just going into an Exceeds monster and deals 3,000 damage. That was mildly disappointing until the circle hit the field. It was summoning beautiful. three big monsters. But one thing. Uh, uh, I really like this. This is kind of a hero story for the Fire King deck now for, for our stream. Oh, because yeah. we still haven't figured out what the deck tries to do in turn one. <laughs> that is true. But we might learn a little bit more about that, already spoiling a bit of additional content for the rest of the weekend. Because we have some new segment coming this weekend, and it's going to be combo tutorials, where we sat yeah. down with players that are really, really good at their deck that they're presenting to us. And then they're going to show us the main combo of the deck. Yeah. And we're also going to talk about a couple of interactions and so on. And and I can tell you, I personally sat down with the man himself, Joshua Schmidt, which explained a couple more um, Fire King combos to us. So definitely make sure to uh, wait for that, check that out, and enjoy the combo tutorial there. You are definitely an expert on this deck now, because you, you were there, right? He was teaching you. Indeed, I was there. And you could tell after this match. <laughs> but yeah. But <laughs> no, the thing is, I, I didn't. This came by. This was a complete surprise to me that Garunix also has that graveyard effect. Because it was the Garunix triggering yeah. in the graveyard there, spashed something both the materials that it had before. And then yeah. all of a sudden, we had all of those big attack monsters attacking, attacking, attacking. It was crazy, honestly. Yeah, that was a lot of damage. Way over 10,000 damage in one turn. Phenomenal OTK right there. I, I love it when the when the rogue decks are just just surprising everyone, and they're actually just showing off. Yeah. Hey, we can win easily. We have strong win conditions as well. But let's stop us talking about the Fire King deck, but rather let's hear it from Diego. Ed, take it away. Thank you, Leo. Yes, I am here with the winner of our round two feature match, Diego, with that Fire King deck that you were just talking about. Diego, round two on the feature match. How are you feeling? I'm feeling good. The deck is really fun to play. And it's pretty new. I mean, it came out like two days ago. And then we, I'm having a blast playing it. It's so fun. What made you pick it? Phonix is cute. Is, is that it? Just this. <laughs> I love Phonix. Phonix is the god. So that was quite an interesting duel to go through. The first game went on for 20 minutes. Yeah. So when you're having quite a drawn out game, why didn't you decide to just scoop or maybe try something else? Why did you decide to stick it out? That's a good question, because Fire King has a really good grind game. It basically recurs every resources. 
very well. Plus, Kirin is a card, a fantastic card. I mean, it can summon itself, summon another monster, destroy another card, even not targeting. It's so good in the grind game. So, that's my take. That's fair. I mean, yeah, you did decide just to kind of slog it out. I've, I've written down every back and forth. There was a Chimera, you Nibirud. And then there was a oh there was an issue with trying to equip the token to Anima. So do you want to talk us through what was going through your head in those moments? I thought that was a thing I could do. <laughs> I think that's entirely fair. But apparently the question mark says no. Getting to that game two, there were a couple of issues there, which meant to a, a slow play warning led to a game loss there. So you were one apiece. And then that game three was so exciting because I think you managed to stop the which one was it? It was the Burfamet. You managed to stop that with the effect Veiler. Yeah, it was a really, I mean, fair game because uh, Garunix Eternity is a fantastic card. Plus, Circle in my hand was uh, perfect to OTK my opponent. And uh, so much damage on the board makes the thing, I feel. Yeah, and you took the win, so congratulations. Now, is there anything that you're worried about going up against with that Fire King deck this weekend? I mean, no, it's the best deck. Phonics will carry. <laughs> You've heard it here first, everyone. So congratulations again, mate. We'll put all the best of luck going for the rest of the rounds here at YCS Bologna. Guys, don't go anywhere because we're going to be back very shortly with a quiz before we get into our round three feature.